Listening is an act of love. Thank you. You can help lift up the voices, stories, and challenges we share by making a contribution at thiswayout.org. A sincere thank you to all of you who already support This Way Out. Your support matters. I'm Wendell Jones. And I'm Melanie Keller. With NewsWrap, a summary of some of the news interaffecting LGBTQ communities around the world for the week ending November 13th, 2021. Debate has begun on Ghana's proposed anti-LGBTQ law. Sharp words were exchanged on the promotion of proper human sexual rights in Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021 in a committee of parliament this week. The draconian measure increases the penalty for private consensual adult same-gender sex, already punishable by up to three years in prison. It goes on to essentially make public LGBTQ identity illegal. Some offenders would be forced into worthless conversion therapy. Anyone who advocates for queer rights would be punished. The bill bans medical care for transgender people. It even outlaws sex toys in the West African nation. Attorney Okoto Ampau represented a coalition against the bill before the Committee on Constitutional, Legal, and Parliamentary Affairs. In his opening statement, he argued, the very provisions of the bill stoke hate, bigotry, and violence against a small and vulnerable minority community. There were occasional jeers where Ampau called the proposal totalitarian and unconstitutional, according to Reuters. Apostle Abraham Ofari Koragu of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council blamed the West in his opening remarks. He told the committee, LGBTQI plus activities pose a great threat to Ghanaian culture and values. He argued that the measure would protect children and has the support of the vast majority of Ghana's mostly Christian population. In his words, it's a proper vehicle to integrate sound cultural values into our body politic. The committee is expected to hold public hearings for the next 15 weeks, according to Agence France Press. And full debate begins in Ghana's unicameral legislature. Russia's Justice Ministry has added the Russian LGBT network to its registry of foreign agents. The network is one of the country's most high-profile queer advocacy groups with more than a dozen branches across the country. It's best known for helping hundreds of LGBTQ people escape the anti-queer purge in the mostly Muslim Russian region of Chechnya. The network expressed surprise at the foreign agent designation. The label indicates that the designee is receiving foreign funding and is engaged in illegal political activity. Their statement said that the group will continue to operate and that they will be appealing this decision in court. They deny the charge that the organization is involved in political activities. They say it simply offers legal and psychological aid and defends the rights of the LGBT plus community. This is just the latest salvo in President Vladimir Putin's growing war on anti-Kremlin activists, NGOs, and independent media. Amnesty International's Moscow office director Natalia Zviagnia called this week's justice ministry actions beyond shameful. Foreign agents are subject to higher government scrutiny of their finances and are required to disclose the foreign agent label on all official statements and documents. The sanctions have curtailed the activities of targeted groups, including backers of Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny. Some media outlets critical of the Putin regime have closed because their advertising revenue dried up after they were designated foreign agents. Prominent lawyer Ivan Pavlov and his human rights group Team 29 specialized in human rights cases. Pavlov was forced to flee Russia in September and the group dissolved under mounting government pressure. Still, he and four other attorneys from Team 29 were also slapped with the foreign agent label. Pavlov issued a statement calling the foreign agent designation a state honor for service to freedom of speech and information. A married lesbian couple in the UK is suing the National Health Service for anti-queer bias. Megan Bacon Evans and her wife Whitney are high-profile social media influencers with more than 200,000 followers. In their landmark lawsuit, they describe themselves as being shocked and devastated by the obstacles they encountered under current rules of the NHS fertility branch when they wanted to start a family. Lesbian couples and single women must receive 12 IVF treatments to prove their medical infertility before they can get NHS financial help. That costs tens of thousands of pounds. 
The plaintiffs call that an illegal gay tax. Like Megan's own sister, The Guardian notes that the majority of cisgendered heterosexual couples are only required to try to conceive for two years before getting NHS assistance. The case could be heard in an administrative court as early as January. Megan Bacon Evans said, It's time for discrimination to end and for there to be equal treatment with heterosexual couples in the health care system. It's different in Spain, where government-paid fertility services are now open to all women, including single and LBT and non-binary women. The November 5th edict was issued by Health Minister Carolina Darias of the Spanish Socialist Workers' Party. It restores those women's rights to IVF services, which the former ruling conservative Popular Party had rescinded in 2013. Single and queer women have been forced to pay for those services ever since. Darias wrote on Twitter, We have restored rights that should never have been abolished. Transgender U.S. teens and their parents are fighting back against anti-trans state laws. In Knoxville, Tennessee, 14-year-old Farragut High School freshman trans boy Luke Esquivel was hoping to play on the boys' golf team. A state law signed by Republican Governor Bill Lee in March won't let him. It bans trans student athletes from competing in school sports based on their gender identity. Lambda Legal, the American Civil Liberties Union, and the ACLU of Tennessee filed a lawsuit on Esquivel's behalf in the United States District Court for the Middle District of Tennessee on November 11th. Parents Shelley and Mario Esquivel are also plaintiffs in the lawsuit. Young Luke issued a statement through his attorney saying, I was really looking forward to trying out for the boys' golf team and, if I made it, training and competing with and learning from other boys and improving my game. I just want to play like any other kid. The proud mom of a young trans girl is challenging a similar law in Texas. Lisa Stanton told Pink News this week, we are not going to sit idly by and let this law make our child a second-class citizen. She believes that her daughter Maya deserves the ability to play with her peers and gain all the things that come from being a part of a team. Stanton has asked attorneys at Lambda Legal and the ACLU to challenge the state's trans sports ban in court. The ACLU of Texas told Pink News that they are still exploring the legal options for how to best fight the ban. Lambda Legal has yet to respond to Pink News as we record this newscast. Finally, before the trans sports bans, there were the bathroom bans. A number of Republican-controlled states, like Indiana, imposed laws requiring trans people to use public restrooms and locker rooms based on their birth gender. Now, two trans boys at Terre Haute North High School are suing the school district for denying them the right to use the campus facilities that are consistent with their gender identity. Both boys have been out as trans since elementary school. They use male names and pronouns and are both receiving medically supervised hormone therapy. They're being represented by the ACLU of Indiana and Indiana Legal Services in a federal lawsuit against the Vigo County School Corporation. Not only were the boys illegally denied the use of facilities consistent with their gender identity, the suit also charges that the district refused to instruct teachers to use their preferred male names and pronouns. The principal even refused to allow them to be listed in the school yearbook under their male identities. According to the lawsuit, the school district's actions violate both the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and Title IX of the Education Amendments Act of 1972. Ken Falk is the legal director of the ACLU of Indiana. Falk spoke to local TV station WTHI. There are a lot of transgender kids in Indiana. Uh, there are a lot of school systems that are refusing to recognize them as having gender dysphoria. There are a lot of kids who are suffering and I think it's the hope of these uh, two young men um, that not only can they get some remedy for themselves, but they can help educate schools to do not just the right thing, but do what's required by the law. That's News Wrap, Global Queer News with Attitude for the week ending November 13th, 2021. Follow the news in your area and around the world. An informed community is a strong community. News Wrap is written by Greg Gordon, edited by Lucia Chappelle, produced by Brian DeShazer, and brought to you by you. Help keep us in ears around the world at thiswayout.org, where you can also read the text of this newscast and much more. And you can read the transcript and listen to News Wrap each week by subscribing to our This Way Out radio channel on YouTube. For This Way Out, I'm Wenzel Jones. Stay healthy. And I'm Melanie Keller. Stay safe.
This Way Out delivers LGBTQ news and culture to more than 150 local communities on radio stations around the world. And we are also a free online news service. You can choose your favorite way to listen, online or on the air, at thiswayout.org. Please sign up for our free e-newsletter, Inside This Way Out. We will respect your trust in us and make sure your personal information is never shared with others. Just send us an email at info at thiswayout.org to receive the informative and unique addition to the show. You'll be invited to join us for a more in-depth look into our stories and be encouraged to learn more about This Way Out's three decades of broadcast activism. We hope you choose to join us in celebration of LGBTQ history and culture. Email us at info at thiswayout.org to join the movement. We'll make sure you always know what's going on inside This Way Out. 